Hi, Amanda. Good to see you. I'm Darcy, and I'm the founder of Wheat. I'm on Treaty 1 territory here. We're the homeland of the Red River Valley Métis and the ancestral lands of the Ininuak, Anishinaabe, Dene, Dakota, and Oji Cree. We're right here on the eastern shore of Lake Manitoba. So just welcoming you in and uh, give a brief introduction for us before we talk about your work. Mm, absolutely. It's good to see you. Um, I'm Amanda Gross. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm coming to you from the original lands of the Cherokee people. So Asheville, North Carolina, and the United States. Welcome. So we're here to talk a little bit about your course, Cultural Awareness and Intersectionality, which is part of Wheat's Weaving Braids of Belonging program, which is looking at equity, diversity, and inclusion through the arts, movement, and mindfulness practices. So you're teaching this Saturday afternoon class with Métis art therapist Taylor Schenkeveld. So just wanting to give a little space to explore what this process will be this Saturday afternoon. How will we create a, a safe place for people to have maybe some difficult conversations around this work? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I've been thinking a lot about um, containers in my work. And that's also, you know, an important part of, of the space that we will be co-creating. I brought, I have a little basket here that I made. It's um, longleaf needle pine actually from uh, Atlanta, from a park where I grew up. So, um, and where my aunt still lives. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a coil basket, but I'm thinking of containers, which could be baskets. It could be um, any sort of vessel you have, like a mug uh, or a box. You know, we have lots of different types of containers. Um, and so containers are really important in our work um, especially when we're delving into culture and understanding our own culture, understanding our intersectional identities, where we come from, um, because sometimes that can bring up a lot, <laughs> you know, a lot from what we've experienced in our lifetimes, or even, you know, especially um, part of our course is to look uh, more deeply at our roots, understanding our cultural roots, understanding, you know, how our ancestors came to the lands that we are on now. Um, and what that history has been. And so you know, that can that can be a lot for folks. And especially since we are navigating this together in community, it's really important for us to be clear about the, co the containers that we wanna co-create together. Um, so yeah, so some of the questions that we ask around that is what do you need for yourself, like to bring your best self to the space? What do you need for support? and challenge, you know, what challenge do you want? How do you wanna grow? Um, and what does that look like for you individually? Um, that might mean having a glass of water handy, taking breaks, um, having someone you can process stuff with afterwards. And then we're also thinking about our collective container, right? So what do we want? What are our values for sharing space together during our afternoon sessions? Um, so that's really important that we, you know, set establish our container from the beginning and we check in and we're navigating that together, making sure that, you know, is this working? <laughs> Can we check back in and see if, if see if we need something else? Um, sure. so that's one thing I've been, you know, we think a lot about and is um, and is an important part of the structure of the course. And and co co-facilitating too, you know, Taylor and I are already have been navigating that and do that some of it behind the scenes, right? And then it's also how do we um, co-create that space together. Right. And I think the arts are such an important part of that as well, aren't they? Because they just provide uh, spaces that are beyond our cognitive understanding. So we, we get so much information from creating things. Do you want to talk a little bit about how the creative process will be a part of those eight afternoons? Sure. And also the importance of it. I, I mean, what you just shared, um, I have a, a colleague who talks about how the ego resides in the intellect. So if we get stuck in our heads, <laughs> you know, that can be a place that's hard to get out of. And so the arts, you know, for me, and especially in um, DEI work is, is a way to get out of that, right? A way to, to move, like physically we're moving in our bodies, um, letting our creativity flow, uh, finding, you know, expressions that don't have to be, work. we don't have to find the precise word for it, right? It can be an image or a feeling or a color. It can be a lot of things. Um, so the arts are also a really important container for our work. Um, 
Yes, and can you remind me, oh, the second part of the question, which is um, how we will use the arts. Um, well, I, I have a background, I'm trained in Raja Yoga. So we do, um, we, there's supporting folks and being in, in their bodies, right? There's noticing what's coming up in our bodies. There's opportunities for some breath work and movement. And then there's also a creative exploration of the material that we're working with. Um, so you don't have to be a skilled or trained artist to participate. I mean, that is, accessibility is really important. Um, and, you know, that can, I think when people think of arts, like there's this idea that it's like painting or sculpture or very precise. Um, but it could be like, you know, uh, sometimes we, we do like look around your space and find, you know, find a few items in your space that you already have and arrange them in a way, right, that, that speaks to you or expresses something. Um, so that is what also what, you know, what we mean when we talk about arts. Mm -hmm. So really accessible creativity in a sense. Um, it, it also makes me think about the other courses that'll be supporting your course. Like we have two mindfulness classes. So that just paying attention to what's going on in your body through, through mindfulness or mindfulness and movement with Teresa and Morris. And then the Saturday morning will be peace building and conflict resolution through the arts with Bonfast. So I think you know, all the pieces will kind of come together to help people have a, a deeper experience of this work. Um, I'm wondering if you could share some of your experiences in the real world doing expressive arts practice for social change. I know you've got a deep, rich background in that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, part of the using using the arts is, is really being resourceful with what we have and and being aware of our context and where we're at too. And so um, I lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for about 13 years. And for, if you've been there, <laughs> you might have noticed the number of bridges. It's a really important part of the city's culture and identity. Um, and ironically, a lot of Pittsburgh is pretty segregated in different communities and neighborhoods um, in terms of race, in terms of class and lots of other, you know, factors. And so um, uh, I was interested in, in what different communities had in common and how we could, you know, uh, to use the metaphor, to knit stronger communities and also bridge, you know, different ones. And so um, as a fiber artist, I'm, I'm drawn to a lot of different types of uh, uh, fiber artwork, right, textiles. And so knit and crochet is something that almost every community, <laughs> at least in Pittsburgh, um, has already a knowledge and a culture around. Um, and also is pretty accessible to like most ages. Um, so, and uh, the tradition, I don't know if you've heard of yarn bombing, but um, it's a type of fiber art installation that comes out of really is similar to graffiti. Sometimes it's called yarn graffiti, but it's about reclaiming and celebrating public space. Um, and so myself and 2000 other people <laughs> uh, decided to cover one of the large, um, actually the Andy Warhol Bridge, 7th Street Bridge downtown. Um, and for me, you know, it was like a really joyous celebratory installation, but it, it was, you know, I, I went into it with a lot of intention about uh, making sure that uh, all of the folks in, you know, that many people in Pittsburgh and in Allegheny County and in the surrounding area who wanted to be represented on the bridge would be. Um, and so there were some ways that we were really intentional, intentional about making it accessible um, and going outside of, you know, I was connected to the Fiber Arts Guild of Pittsburgh. And so there was already a built-in community support. But if we wanted to have, you know, folks who maybe don't consider themselves artists, aren't guild members, um, you know, learn to crochet from their grandma. Like there's all these other ways that people might knit and crochet and want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. right. I love that. It's such a peaceful uh, protest in a sense and a peaceful way of showing up with your creativity. And I think I'm hopeful that your course will actually encourage people to find their own resources to deal with ways to connect and bring people together in creative, peaceful ways. So I'm excited for that. So really looking forward to your course, Amanda. Folks can register at info at weedinstitute.com and find out more information on our website. So looking forward to seeing you. Thanks for your time. <laughs>
Bye. <laughs> I, well, I,